The Carolyn Hacks column uh, started 25 years ago. To maintain that level of energy and freshness and creativity for that long, to make the column still feel fresh every time, is an amazing achievement. At the time, there was nothing like Carolyn's column running in the post. This was such a fresh voice, it was so different. My name is Carolyn Hacks, and I write an advice column for the Washington Post on relationships, and I've been writing it since May of 1997. I had been hired as a part-time copy editor, so I was trying to work my way up through a very difficult path. She flexed a little bit of ambition, which, if you know Carolyn, is a big deal because uh, she's not a self-promoter. I actually didn't enjoy writing that much. Um, it was something I enjoyed having done. I didn't like doing it. So when the idea of the advice column came up, I thought that's a type of writing that I do comfortably and that isn't too big. At the time I was on the news desk and I had been working with Peggy Hackman one day. She was the editor of Style Plus, which was a service journalism page inside the style section. The managing editor had approached Peggy and asked her about running an advice column for younger people. It was a syndicated column that ran somewhere else and Peggy hated it. And she came to me and said, do I have to run this column because the managing editor asked me to? And I said, nah, <laughs> why don't you dream up your own column if he wants something that's addressed to younger people? Peggy groused to Carolyn. I knew of the column and I didn't like it. I said it was really sort of fossilized and what you really need is a snotty 30 year old writing it. They agreed to do some uh, test columns and it looked like it it was quite promising. When we started the column, it was called Tell Me About It. I think that was all part of the package of creating a feature for younger readers. The woman is talking to me on a date. Listen, I'm pushing 30. I'm going to like you regardless. It's <laughs> People ask often, you know, oh, does she have a degree in psychology? Is she a... No. She, she doesn't. Carolyn sounds like your no-nonsense, cut-to-the-chase, uh, very sharp friend. Every once in a while I get an email saying, what qualifies you to do this job? You're just, and, and my answer is always nothing. And that's, but that's the job. The advice column job has never been a therapist's position. You're sending this in to a journalist or a regular person. And this is the perspective of a regular person. And I think there's a place for that. Ann Landers, Dear Abby, they were written by people with no real qualifications except living. And Carolyn really made the point from very early on that she had lived through many of the things people were writing about. And Peggy was the one who also said, um, maybe we can get Nick to draw an icon to go with the columns. And the idea was that I would come up with a, a half a dozen just cartoon images that were very general. And of course, Nick, being Nick, produced the first one as a fully realized cartoon for the letter in the column. <laughs> it had nothing to do with being an icon. It was just, here's the cartoon for this column. Sort of, you know, like, held my breath. And Peggy, Peggy's like, I, I like that. I've been making cartoons for the column ever since. And Carolyn, over the course of 25 years, and actually over the course of just the first few years, she became likely the best to ever do what she does. When the column started, we were, we were married. Even though it you know, might have been the world's most amicable divorce, even the world's most amicable divorce is, you know, an emotional thing. We both trusted each other to care about each other, to want our column and cartoon, you know, collaboration to succeed. We kept what was best between us, the, the good parts between us. And they make for a good working relationship because among those things is, is trust. Having each other's back, understanding each other's sensibilities. When I think about our having been married before and now being work partners, I think a lot of people are mystified by that. Like, how do you possibly do that? And it's just like, I see it as the thing that brought us together was real and true, but it was in the wrong form before. 
it was in a, it was in a form that didn't bring out our best, but this brings out each other's best. Like I think we are we are good for each other in this form. I was talking to a therapist about my work and she said she refers to my columns as flowcharts. I take a situation and I go down the various paths given the possibilities. It's almost like relationship problems as math. She cuts through noise. She doesn't spend a lot of time on the symptoms of the thing. She knows how to get right to truth of it and what is right or wrong. And you think, well, everybody knows right and wrong, and that's actually not true. Some of the most common subjects or issues that we get are in a relationship, settling for less than you, than you should. All advice columnists need to be thankful that there will always be in-laws. Toxic friends. Blended families. Weddings seem to be a perfect trigger for people losing their minds in a variety of ways. Fear of going for a particular job. Being in love with your best friend. The problems are essentially the same, and I suspect it's been like that since we've been wandering the earth. Human nature doesn't really change, so, so in that sense, our problems don't change, but the context changes. Over time, I've watched how our understanding of human behavior has even gotten better in the last 25 years, and I think we're more willing to admit that we're bumping around in the dark on our own selves. We don't always know what, what we're doing. Under, we don't always understand our own motivations. It's hard to imagine the column without the illustration. It's hard to imagine Carolyn without Nick in the paper um, because they complement each other so. And the illustration is always apt, but it's almost always not literal. It's not exactly what you would have expected, uh, but it's, it, again, it, it's part of the package. If you need the column to get the cartoon, then it's a no-go. At some point, very early on, I started putting people I knew in the cartoons. The very first people were Carolyn, our dog Zuzu, and myself. For the cartoons that I refer to as the Chaxies, they're all Carolyn. And they're all based on Carolyn. And they're called that because Chaxi is C hacks, Chax, and then Chaxi, sort of as a, a, a nickname for it. Those are drawn in a different style and always have been. They have these you know, giant heads and little bodies because they're actually based on self caricature post it notes that Carolyn used to leave around the house. Oh, these are, these are great. And I see again why they compelled me to make the chaxis. These are the root of the chaxis. I think one of the, my basic rules to live by is figure out your rules and live by them. Because I'm not saying you have to do things my way. I'm saying do things your way and I'm supporting that. And, and giving advice that leads to better decision making according to your own rules. There is a certain way you can live in honor of your own uh, principles and according to your own talents and nature. And I think if you can do that, if you can make the best of your circumstances, then then I, I feel like I've done my job. If somebody's writing into an advice columnist, that means they've got a real issue. It's something that's troubling them. And so you want to have a receptive voice that's also of their generation. And that's what she's been. You think about it, 25 years later, a lot of these readers have grown up with Carolyn. The thing that I've drawn on most to write this is profound self-doubt um, and second guessing. I don't just stride through life with the confidence that I've got it all figured out. It is quite the opposite. One of the reasons I can comment on so many things is because I've thought about this stuff. I've questioned myself on it. I've looked at others for answers. Like, how do you do this? How do you manage this? Because I, I'm not doing too well. If you start to read this stuff enough, you recognize that everybody has their Everybody has their arc, everybody has their pain, everybody has something going on. I love being invited into people's stories 
and I recognize that my stay is temporary. And so I come in and I do what I can and I learn from it and I appreciate it and then I get back out. Maybe there's a little bit of self-preservation there. I can't dwell on the fact that there is so much pain. You can't be privy to 25 years worth of people's problems and not self-examine. You start seeing patterns. We never knew this was going to grow and we just we just kept going. What's next for a column that's existed for 25 years? The next 25 years. I, you know, I don't know if it'll go that long, but I certainly look forward to the next column and the next cartoon. Uh, my enthusiasm for it is as great as it ever was. Um, I do like the fact that when you do something for 25 years, the muscle memory takes care of some things so that you can really invest in the interesting part. When I was first doing it, it was, the learning curve felt so steep that it was exhausting just to do certain things. And now I can really focus on the stuff that I find interesting. I don't wanna stop now when I feel like I'm in the best part.